So the communicator, the basic operation for the user, there's only one switch, no other choices. So the only thing you do is decide when you want to press the switch. So this is the usual disclaimer. And by the way, I don't believe disclaimers do any good, but we put that in there anyway. So continue when ready or initialize. Now initialize means to start it. So you have two inputs here, a, a switch input or a pressure sensor. That's correct. So you... the, um, the initialize can only happen on this screen because you don't want that to happen accidentally. And the only way to initialize is for the caretaker to lift this up, press this button simultaneously with pressing this button. Okay. Other than that, uh, and then everything uh, everything initializes to the standard. Uh, why standard why the unit. two button approach? Oh, the, we unfortunately we were we were trying to be everything to everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, some people could push a button and others could only breathe or puff. Okay. So that's was the idea of this. This is a a standard transfer pipette. Uh -huh. They're disposable. They cost next right. to nothing. Yeah. And if the person wants to puff it, uh, they'll puff it to operate. Just cut off this top, uh, okay. and uh, you can puff in there. Yeah. Otherwise, you squeeze this right. to. Uh, so if I so if I squeeze this right now, oh, it did go. Yep. Because you had already initialized it. Right. Okay. So this is uh, the main menu. So so my I, the, the reason I asked that question sure. is is um, my thought is if you're building something like this and there was a power outage. And there and there was no caregiver close by. Now they can't. It doesn't initialize automatically. Well, no. In, initialize in this case means to wipe everything in the memory clean uh, and start over. Oh, uh, okay. Um, not not to get the thing running. Right. So it, it, you As can start. As a matter of fact, it. I am going to unplug it. Uh huh. Uh, we'll plug it back in, and it's as good as it was. Oh, okay. So then you could continue when ready. Mm hmm. And. Uh, all right. Okay. And so now it's scanning. Right. So uh, these are kind of menus that we put in. Well, let me go to the system menu just to show you something. Uh, this has uh, some menus which we put in, but there's Morse code. More right. about that later. Right. But let's get rid of that. Why scan that if you're not going to use it? So we'll go to system control. Uh, and let's go to more functions. We'll set up the main menu, and this just explains what's going to happen. So there's a whole bunch of menus which could be used. The asterisk ah, shows okay. one which, which are active. I will inactivate the Morse code menu, and we'll go back to the system, and then back to the main menu. And now we have the same menu without the Morse code choice. So, for instance, say if the person is a little bit uh, too, well, let's do the obvious one, yes, no. If you're asked a question, you could answer yes, no, I don't know, why not. That's something I changed yesterday. All these things are changeable by the user. Let's, for instance, let's, let's edit this. Why not doesn't really fit into yes, no. So I'll go to the bottom line where the choice is between the main menu and the edit function. I'll go to edit. I want to clear a line, so I'll click on that. And I'll click on why not. And uh, we're back to the main menu. So now if I choose a yes, no menu, I'm more restricted in my choices. It's yes, no, I don't know. And at any time, I can go back to the main menu. By the way, if I do nothing for a few minutes, this goes into standby with a warning that it's going into standby. The way you get it out of standby, uh, standby is just hit your switch, and it, it comes right back where it was. This has a speaker now on it, too? Yes, it does. So if I, so if I pick no, it'll... Yes, it just said no, and it, it's kind of hard to hear. It repeats about every five seconds. No. And... Uh, just the next time you hit the switch, it stops the speech, but it continues a scan. How how many uh, people got to use this? Ah, that's the exact figure is lost to history, but it was about thirty-five units. Okay. 
So for two guys in the garage, that was yeah, yeah. respectable. Yeah. But and it's interesting when we presented the idea to the I forget what it was, some group in Northridge, the college in Northridge. We told them about the idea, and they said. You're not going to make a go of it, and it turned out they were right. This yeah, was yeah. too involved. It was too expensive. Yeah. And then, um, how many? Do you know how many people approximately could benefit from a device like this? No, um, I just know that there are some people that could. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we have to discuss is: is it worth doing? Is the yeah. project worth doing? There's lots of projects that sound like a great idea. This one, to me, sounds like a great idea, only because of the history behind it. Yeah. That at least 35 people were able to raise upwards of $3,000 to buy this device. Right. Nowadays, it uh, doesn't cost anywhere near that much, and my hope is with this project to make it free for the user, yeah. or very nominal, like $10. Whether it's practical to do is part of the decisions that are involved in how this project will will go on. Well, yeah, my, my thought is, so uh, today I've already um, I set up a, a GitHub repository, mm -hmm. and I, I took the portion that I have working and uh, made it its own project, and I put it onto GitHub. So okay. today, what I already have working is available for anybody in the world to download and modify. Okay. So... Um, so if if nothing else, uh, you know, if if we get a little bit working, um, it's out there, in the world, mm -hmm. for free for other people to to continue to fork. Oh, you see, now it's going to stand by because we haven't done anything for a yeah. while. So uh, yeah, I don't, you know, um, it, it'd be great, you know, if. Uh, there was some unlimited budget, and you could just work on things like this to help people. Um, right. But uh, unfortunately, that's not how things always work. Mm hmm So. Well, one of the things is that uh, I, for instance, know nothing about Android programming. Okay. This is where you come. Well, obviously, I don't know much about uh, collaborative software. My hope is that this could be a collaborative project yep. for people who want to add something. One of the big problems, as I see it, we have to decide in advance. First of all, we obviously can't be, oh, that's a good start. So th this is, I, did you see the video? I posted? Yes, but I uh, couldn't read it. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. so th this is, uh, this is I, I forked what I had before. Mm -hmm. and I, I love this. I could see in the background the, the CRT scanning. That's just something you don't see much in videos these days, right? right? And so, um, uh, what I what I'm using here is the uh, the uh, the play pause button oh. on a on a headset, mm -hmm. and when you press it, it it will copy whatever's on the button. Right now, these all, all say the same thing. I see. And then um, when it gets to the send, and obviously this is very inefficient because there's so many buttons here. Mm -hmm. uh, when it gets to send, you could click send. And it will actually say it, and it's saying down at the bottom of the screen it it it, uh, it toasted. So in Android, the, the little messages that come out at the bottom are called a toast. Mm -hmm. And so it toasted what it what it transmitted. Now, one of the things that I mentioned at the very beginning on the menu, it said Morse code. Yeah. Some people might laugh, but it turns out that learning Morse code, if you have nothing else to do, you can learn it very well within a week. Sure. Yeah. And uh, it's much faster than scanning. Now, it does require that you have a certain amount of cognition, uh, but just because a person is paralyzed doesn't mean they lack cognition. Button, button, button. Well, that speech is a lot better than the one sure. we had. Also button, a lot cheaper. Button, 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 yep. button, button. Yeah, so, uh, so that's what's working on that. And this is like uh, this is on. Um, I posted it to uh, GitHub slash Pontech slash Talking, T A W K I N G mm -hmm. is where the project is. Okay, it's so live today. history is being made at this moment. Yes, yes. So, um, so that there's a, a here's a couple issues where I'm at. Uh, 
with this plugged in, of course, you can't hear it, right? right. So when when I press send, it, it's it's actually generating the tone, but it's coming through the the headphones, mm -hmm. and I'd like it to come through the device speaker. And it seems like there may be ways of doing this within Android and rerouting the audio. Like I know with this plugged in, the phone will produce audio through the speaker. Mm -hmm. Alarms go through the speaker. So there's ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't figure it out yet. Doesn't mean somebody else doesn't know how. I just, I've tried and I can't figure it out. Well, my first uh, feeling is I should be worried that you don't know. But then again, when I started this, yeah. The only Z80 program I ever did was to blink an LED, sure. same as everybody sure. does. The second program was this. So, so learn what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So this is my this is my current uh, uh, backup plan. Uh, we're gonna make a little PC board that uh, we could plug uh, the Android audio into this. It'll have uh, four jacks, so you could hook up, hook up external switches or pressure switches, mm -hmm. and um, you could hook up external speakers. Okay. And so you could buy external speakers for fifteen dollars. This board will cost about uh, ten dollars to make, and mm -hmm. so it it adds twenty five dollars to the cost, but it's not it's not a showstopper. Right now, my theory is, or my hypothesis is, that it should be easy to take a small, little, currently existing Bluetooth module, mm -hmm. and use it to either send signals to the Android. Or receive signals from it, almost like a breakout box. Sure. So, those of you who are watching this video, if you can do things like that, let us know. Yeah. This is what I mean by collaborative, because there's many people who know software, many people who know hardware, some lucky few who know both. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, a lot to do now. Initially, I just. I would like to get something out there that works in English, just to type a message and maybe have a few menus. Get that going. With this, uh, keep this in mind though, we will want to add other uh, capabilities to it. So make sure we have some way on the, I don't know if program architecture is the correct term, but some way we can have program architecture where we can update the program and yeah. the person's uh, or the user's menus that they already put in in their system control is not affected. Yeah, so uh, so what I've been looking at is there's a, a JSON library. So JSON is a, it's a file format for storing data. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you could store hierarchical data like menus, right? So this, mm -hmm. uh, this menu is a hierarchy. When you, when you click on uh, this one, it goes into another menu. So in JSON, you could store hierarchical menus, and there's some libraries out there that I found that will allow you to basically set up these menus and store them in a file. And so you basically just have one program that reads this file, and it can be customized per user or uh, per language. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's 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 my thought. And then and then the, essentially the program is already done. It's just a matter of. Uh, getting the uh, menu system working. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things, remember when I was talking about the initialize function, that's something that the, I'll use the word patient, that the mm -hmm. patient can't do. Yeah. Because if you accidentally initialize, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that the caregiver has to set up. Right. You'll see some switches up here. Yeah. In this case, uh, the switches says NC and NO for normally closed, normally open. For your switch. For the type of switch that the person is yeah. using. This also has Spanish and English, okay. so you could switch between the languages. It also has TTL and composite. That was a type of monitor. Okay. That obviously has no effect right, on, right. on this. Okay. Uh, in later software, we included a switch to lock the menu system. For someone who has poor cognition, mm -hmm. You want them to be able to use the menu, but you don't want them playing around with it because mm -hmm. they may destroy everything. So right, right. this is up to the caregiver or the doctor or therapist involved sure. whether the system should be locked or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some there's some hardware we would need for the initial the initial one. Probably no hardware is needed other than the uh, the switch that you showed. Right, right. That you plug it in. So just to communicate. 
um, and uh, the details about how to allow the speech through, I don't know. But my hope is eventually we can come up with a very, very inexpensive module, probably Bluetooth, because almost all Androids have Bluetooth, um, that would allow you to do other things like control. Uh, well, this unit had environmental control. Yeah. This used the then extant X10 system. Yep. Yep. And, well, I can defeat the standby. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Sorry, this is what happens when you do things without a, uh, without a, uh, a script. Yeah, without Plan? a script, exactly. That's all right. So I'll wait till the next time it goes into standby. Let's pretend that the user just, they, they set it going too fast, or for some reason they're not responding fast enough. So when it goes into, when you get the warning that it's going into standby, be prepared to hit the button because then there's something called an overspeed escape. If you hit the button, it will then slow down, give you a test to pass. If you pass the test, you're back in the menu. If you don't pass, it'll slow down some more. You, um, you can also get there from the uh, system control, right? Yes. Um, so, so one of the things I, I had thought about this, so we got, this is one, two, three, four, five, six items. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I don't know, like, so, so if these were one second each, it's six seconds to scan through this. Right. Right. Um, but if, if you instead highlighted two at a time, then your, your scan is three seconds mm -hmm. and then another second to select between the two. So you're, 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 it allows you to, to go faster. Okay, now, things like this, well, the phrase I learned years ago, it's just a question of software. Yes, yes. You can, uh, my, my thought is, and this is something that we all will have to discuss on the setup, yeah. is do we want to add some complexity, which may make things easier in the long run for the user? Yeah. Uh, and this could easily be done... Uh, in the system control or the initialize setup, whether yeah. you have, I don't know what you would call it, bunching or 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 not. Yeah. And, uh, and, well, also one of the things I'm thinking of, somebody, oh, okay, here's it's going to stand by, so okay. we wait, and then this is on for about three or four seconds. Um, it'll give us the, Overspeed okay, escape. select now. And this is self-explanatory. It verifies that it's not going too fast. So this has just six letters that are going. And here's the letter you have to match. So go ahead and see if you can do so it. So we missed it. Okay. Oh, I missed it again. Missed it again. And oh, if wait. you miss one more, it'll slow down. Okay, it's slowing down by 20%. Okay. Let's see... You have to get three in a row right. And for those of you with a stopwatch, when I say 25%, that's approximate. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. That's, uh...